The war on drugs everywhere is a U.S. war. The U.S. is the largest consumer of illegal narcotics in the world as a market. Almost half of the whole drug market is in the United States. The U.S. has always been pushing the most radical militaristic solution to the drug problem. The basis of the U.S. drug war in the United States is the prison system. And in places like Mexico, in places like Central America, Colombia, it's massacre and it's enforced disappearance. And it's often based on social class, it's based on living in certain areas that are resource rich, it's based on the potential that those communities could be a threat. That's where again that same pretext gets used, they're called narco-traffickers, they're called drug dealers, and instead of being you know, brought to jail, they're, they're murdered in the street. I think what's happening in Mexico is a counterinsurgent war against the people. And I think in Mexico, they've sort of expanded the idea of who the insurgent is to include basically the entire population. Even just the idea that people are living in different ways, that they have assemblies, that they're living on collective land, that they're organizing in some way, even just with their neighbors, all of those things are seen as threats to the dominant order. And in Mexico, they're being dealt with through a kind of counterinsurgency that is extremely violent. The Merida Initiative started in 2008, and it's a multi-billion dollar plan funded by the United States to finance the militarization, essentially, uh, of the war on drugs in Mexico. So when the drug war started in 2006, there was 4,000 federal police. Uh, now there's 40,000, and they're deployed together with the army to different cities to fight the war on drugs and what we see time after time in these different regions where federal police and soldiers are deployed together is a spike in homicide rates, a spike in violence, a uh, spike in disappearances and again enacted against the population at large. We're told that it's one drug cartel sending a message to another drug cartel but when you know in your town there's a bunch of beheaded bodies in the central square that's a message to the whole town what the militarization of prohibition is really done because it's a militarized strategy to enforce prohibition is it's meant that you know the folks who are moving these products also militarize and that's kind of a, a paramilitary process. In Mexico these groups aren't explicitly political groups but it's clear that they often work closely with other parts of the same state apparatus that's fighting them. So like say the p federal police come in and they crack down on the Sinaloa cartel, okay the Sinaloa cartel goes and they start working with state level police officers, whatever it is. So people in these strategic areas, just regular folks trying to get on with their lives, they're the ones who are being, you know, picked up, disappeared. They're the ones who are being massacred. They're the ones who are paying actually with their lives for this war. And so when you take that kind of step back and you see it on a bit more of a macro level, it's very clear that what's happening is a war against the people. And the whole idea of the state fighting drug cartels is a big charade basically to justify militarization, paramilitarization, and a war against the population.